Support for this episode is provided by listeners like you. If you'd like to be a part of the great people keeping this show going, please visit thelinecast.com slash donate. Welcome to The Linecast. I'm David Moulton. And I'm Keith Slesser. Joining us this episode is Jonathan and Jenny Groff, the powerhouse behind Stroopies. The couple gives us an inside look into the history of this delectable cookie. Stroopy is a nickname, really, for Stroopwafel, which is a Dutch cookie from Holland. And it's basically a cinnamon cookie the size of the top of your coffee cup. And it's actually done that way in, on purpose. Uh, between the, in the middle of the cinnamon cookie is a layer of caramel, and it gets kind of firm. But if you set it on top of your coffee cup or your hot tea, it warms that caramel sauce back up again. So, um, Stroop Waffles being from Holland, we thought, ah, let's, let's choose an easier name. And there is a nickname out there called Stroopy. We, and we grabbed it and said, yeah, let's go with it. Let's call it Stroopies. We discovered that one of the core values behind this company is a desire to provide employment for people with English as a second language. We're excited about the cookie, yeah, but we're also excited about um, being able to employ some of the people that have come here to Lancaster who are just learning English, looking for jobs. Um, So she just started this past fall. That was one of our goals, and um, she's just working very part-time right now, but doing an incredible job. Enjoy the conversation. Well, Jenny, Jonathan, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having us. Good to be here. We're going to talk about your business, Stroopies, which makes Stroopies. But before we go <laughs> any further, can you explain what a Stroopy is? Well, Stroopy is a nickname, really, for Stroopwafel, which is a Dutch cookie from Holland. And it's basically a cinnamon cookie the size of the top of your coffee cup. And it's actually done that way in, on purpose. Um, between the, In the middle of the cinnamon cookie is a layer of caramel, and it gets kind of firm, but if you set it on top of your coffee cup or your hot tea, it warms that caramel sauce back up again. So um, Stroop Waffles being from Holland, we thought, ah, let's, let's choose an easier name. And there is a nickname out there called Stroopy. We, and we grabbed it and said, yeah, let's go with it. Let's call it Stroopies. What was your first introduction to the cookie itself? We have a good friend. His name is Ed McManus, who um, does a lot of traveling. He had been to Holland lots of times, and he would bring these home to the U.S. to share with family and friends. And he's the one who actually, as he spent about a year trying to tweak the recipe, and you know, we can go more into the history, but he, he would use us as guinea pigs. <laughs> here, 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 try it out. You like them? And we're like, what are these things? We didn't know, you know, but we soon grew to, to really appreciate them. They're yummy. So when he first introduced you to them, did he say, here's Trubies? Just kidding. I mean, it's just, it's just kind of <laughs> the name. It was there. <laughs> I think uh, he was trying for a long time to figure out what to name him, but uh, he, his biggest goal was to make something that uh, people would be addicted to and, and could, couldn't turn away. And after they had one, they'd have more. So he kept testing them, all his friends. So, so he laced them with, said, with no, crack. That's it. Is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Super addictive. Thought that I had. And then actually, he <laughs> he ended up like having a friend from um, the Netherlands, from Holland, who he said, "I need a little help here because my recipes, you know, I just so his Dutch friend helped him, um, ah. and so this is a very authentic." Dutch recipe that we're really grateful to have and so people that have like tasted them like in Amsterdam they're like everywhere in cafes so um, when they taste them they say oh yeah this this tastes like what I had over there so wow so we're really we're really excited about that very cool now when we were talking a little beforehand I, I, I was saying how my grandmother would make them or if I'm wrong about that uh, if I have family members listening it, it I and know that they were at least in the house, and I really enjoyed them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that time passed, and I was completely forgot about them. So I went a really long time without seeing them anywhere, or almost forgot about them, and all of a sudden I saw them in the local coffee shop, and I was like, oh my gosh, these things. And my friends were like, I don't know what those are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. We spend so. a lot of time telling people what they are, because you know a lot of people, if, if they haven't traveled in Europe, most likely don't know. Um, but that's part of the fun of our job. We get to, what we love to do is make them live and show people how you make them, 
how you put them on the iron, take them off, and then fillet them, put a homemade caramel in the center, and then give lots of samples. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that, you know, it's... So your your first introduction to them was your your friend that was trying to make them, or had you been yeah, over no. in Europe and well, had... I was in I was in Amsterdam one time. Okay, um, but I was sick as a dog, so so you didn't eat any of those. No, I was like I was really <laughs> sick, so I didn't really know. I mean, I had a couple of friends who would bring them sometimes as gifts, but I I was not. Because once I, I saw them tonight, I, mm-hmm. I I can remember having seen them before. I don't know that I've ever tried them right. before, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah. um, uh, I didn't know what. A, what they were right. when, when mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah we had to have we had to be educated as well and um basically then our friend he like is one of those guys that's like into a lot of things and needed somebody to come alongside and help him um and so that's where we came in and jonathan's parents have a candy uh factory oh. in millersville uh, called groff's candies and so we had the production space um, to be able to do it. And we always thought it would be fun to have like a little family business, something that we could do uh, with our kids as they get a little older. And so, so that's, that's when we started helping. So is, so. is your, is your friend still involved in it? That yeah, started he's still, it? He's, he's still, still a part, part okay. owner. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. But he doesn't do the day to day activities. We do that now, but he's okay. just kind of like, yeah, part of there's, a, there's actually his brother's also part of it. Another friend, there's a bunch of creative types to help birth it. Each person played their part. I, had, I was mm-hmm. talking about this with someone the other day that Ed's main job was to really fine tune the recipe. There was another guy, guy by the name of Dan Perryman. Um, he really put his heart and soul into um, helping to come up with a design and a logo and working with um, a local company to help design that. And another guy is Ed's brother is really sharp with numbers, helped to understand how to put the business together. Once they did all of that, and then they they kind of handed it off to us, and we're actually worked on the production and marketing and visiting different shops and finding different uh, places to do it live. So, so what what? Uh, go ahead, g- give me a rundown. Like if you do you do a live presentation, I guess, or whatever. Do you do you, have, you flip bottles around while you're doing it stuff? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, we sing an eight part harmony just the two of us. Just the two of you. That's Whoa. that's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's, wow. Yeah. Uh. I can only do yeah. six by myself, but it's, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a unique cookie because all it takes to make it is a waffle iron and a crock pot, and like a cutting board and knife, you know, small couple of small utensils. So we can set up anywhere where we have electricity, um, and we've even done it with a generator, or I think they have some uh, uh, gas run ones too. But um, so if you have like a six foot long card table, if that's the amount of space that we need, we can do at. Um, at an outdoor market or uh, on a fair of some sort. Um, we like to do craft shows, things like that. Uh, it's kind of a high-end, artsy, you know, crafty, handmade product. So that's the crowd we try to uh, please. And it's a lot of fun. It doesn't take too long to set up. And then once we're there and we get the iron warmed up and the smell of the cookie is really the winner. That's what draws people in. And then... We get the opportunity. So someone says, well, what's a stroopy? Or they pronounce it a stroopy or all kinds of different <laughs> pronunciations. And, and then we just get the joy of educating them. Um, it's been a long run. It's been about three, uh, four. We're on our fourth year here of doing it in Lancaster. And now there's, there's quite a lot of people who actually know what they are. They're in the local coffee shops and things. But a lot of it had to start on the outside markets, just educating mm-hmm. people. And we would have people say, I could smell it a block away. And I come to figure out what it is, and um, to, mm-hmm. so to serve one fresh and hot like that is um, just a wonderful experience. You can also find them occasionally. You'll see them imported in from Holland at Turkey Hill or BJ's or something. But it's definitely a factory kind of thing, and and it's just not the same cookie. Um, but people to be able to get one warm right off the iron is just un- unforgettable. Mm-hmm. He came um, this in December. We did a German market um, in actually it was on the border between New Jersey and New York, and we like sold 
somewhere over 5,000 Stroopies in two days. It was absolutely crazy. We had lines, people How fighting, people fighting over. <laughs> going with the- <laughs> it was like, and it, just Jonathan and I were running it, like, and it was. And like, they're all for, well, the ones you're selling. Do you take prepackaged ones yeah, that you had, sell then, right? Yeah, and we then, had prepackaged. Like you're not making five thousand right there. <laughs> no, no, but we had like we should have had more help. It was like absolutely crazy. Like we could hardly eat. Like people were like, <laughs> so it, it, you know, in that setting, people knew what they were, right? Because they had yeah. been in Europe and um, so. And if they didn't know what they were, they were, like, smelling so good that, you know. So it, it's not always quite like that, you know. But it's, like, it, it's encouraging to see settings like that where it's really working well. Because if there's one setting like that that it's working well, I'm sure there's other places. It's just mm-hmm. trying to find them. And so. I, I'm curious a little bit more about the making them part. Because the irons that I've always seen are two or four. Mm-hmm. Makers, I know Pitzels are usually two, and these are kind of a similar type thing. Mm-hmm. Is it four or is it is it two? We do four at a time. Okay. Yeah, it's painstakingly slow. Okay. Um, so now, you, even at the factory, or the, mm-hmm. the, the, it's right. just four at a time? It's still well, we have two irons that we can make eight at a time if there's two of us <sighs> looking at it. Mm-hmm. Oh, but, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When, when we're going about as fast as we can with two irons, it comes out to around 220 stroopies an hour. But the machine wow. in Holland produces 4,000 an hour. <laughs> I mean, it's it's you know, it's a whole different ball game, yeah. um, but it's still every every single one of those. You put a, a ball of cookie dough. It's not like a batter. People think waffle wire, and they think like a runny batter into a mold or something. No, it's 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 a cookie cinnamon cookie dough ball, and you put four of those balls on the iron and you close it, and it takes about a minute and twenty seconds, and then when it opens up. You uh, you have to take them and you actually cookie cutter each one of them. We can do two at a time, and then you take the knife and you fillet it open like into two halves, like an English muffin, and you spread the caramel sauce that's just just out of a crock pot. You spread it on there and close it back up, and um, so the time it takes you to cookie cutter to to fillet and to put the caramel on and put them on the tray. Now the other ones are done. You lift them up and put the you know so you. So you really have to move constantly and fast and watch to not burn yourself with the iron or the caramel. Um, it's it's a difficult well, job. We should show them. We have we have a video of us just recently making them. We can we can show it to on you on my phone. On, yeah, on this Great. Later, later on. Cool. <laughs> so. Very cool. So what is it? Just the how many people are making these right now? Is it just the two of you guys right now doing? Yeah. doing we we the whole also thing, have or? um a refugee uh, lady from Iraq who has moved to Lancaster who's working for us um just very part time and that's kind of that's a big goal of ours with it like we um we're excited about the cookie yeah but we're also excited about um being able to employ some of the people that have come here to Lancaster who are just learning English looking for jobs um so she just started this past fall that was one of our goals and um She's just working very part time right now, but doing an incredible job. She's a really hard worker, um, really motivated to see how many she can make. And um, <laughs> so, what about people so. who've been living here for a while and are still trying to learn English? Because David, you know, is looking for some work. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you can talk to us. You know, we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do. Put on so, a good face. One of the other. <laughs> Or maybe we can just buy into the business by buying them two more irons. We just set up right next to them. We're always looking for good salespeople. We pay commission so much per cookie, you get an account, and they sell 5,000 stroopies over the couple years. You know, you start to collect a little dividend. Is it like a a penny a a a stroopie? (laughs) (laughs) A little bit more, but it is a very slow trickle. Uh So are you guys doing this full-time, both? of you right now no we're not doing no. it full time okay. no i i mean i have four kids um at home so i'm not at home well, there's your school. workforce right there yeah yeah they're right, <laughs> right there. they're, cheap they're in labor. school so <laughs> but i i um probably work two days a week or something with it and you i i i hire jonathan when i uh when i need help yeah. so so how many are you producing in a week because for as much that i see around like that's incredible that you're making well, how many did we make in December? It well, was like I was going to say the question about whether we work full time or part time. The month of December, we're definitely full time. Yeah, definitely. I full-time. mean, we are running ragged until the midnight hours sometimes, trying to keep up. But the rest of the year, the other eleven months totals about the same amount as December. 
So uh, probably about, our average is about 450 Stroopies a week at this point. And we provide Stroopies to about a dozen different cafes and small family-owned grocery stores. Um, and then we try to do a live event like once every other month or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I'm helping out about a day or two a week. I'm trying to make it two days this next year, um, even if it's not in production, just trying to push out... Um, getting new accounts and things like that. But at my day job, is I'm a realtor and property manager, but that has a lot of flex in it too. So if my wife needs me to, to help out, I can generally make that work. So it's a good yeah, combination. Yeah, he actually does all, like when we make the dough, we make close to a thousand dough balls at one time in a big mixer. So that's Jonathan's job. He makes the dough and he also makes the homemade caramel in a big caramel uh, making <laughs> machine. <laughs> so I, I, let, I mean, I just let that be his, you know, one less thing I need to worry about, you know. He can yeah. just make sure there's always dough and syrup that we need, so. Yeah. Well, there's a lot more to talk about. We're going to head to break, and when we come back, we're going to have more with the Groffs. Hey, everybody. We're here at Penn Cinema to find out what everyone's been talking about. Excuse me, why do you choose Penn Cinema? I like the seats. They're really comfy. <laughs> They're a lot nicer than most other places. Even my house. <laughs> Oh, this place is great. I mean, it's popcorn. We got some, uh, we got a slushy machine over there. Found some, we got three clocks. Three clocks for the Lidditz, the Lancaster, and the effort of time, just in case, you know, you don't know what time it is in your area. That's why I love this place. They, they, they think about everybody, you know, very friendly. Has a nicer environment. It's clean and comfortable. It feels independent. You know, like it doesn't feel like part of a system. Like it feels like as big as it is and as polished as it is that it feels independent, you know? Bigger screen, better quality. So it's really close. It's very clean. We come here all the time. What do you like about Penn Cinema? The seats are my favorite thing. Very comfortable. On the rump. <laughs> <laughs> 3D IMAX, the whole shebang. It has a down-home feel and we love the atmosphere that Penn has created. He really tries to take into account what people want in a theater. It's really clean and the seats are really comfy. <laughs> yeah, I like the seats. The best movie theater to come to. Well, you've heard what they have to say. Now come see for yourself. Check out Penn Cinema for first-class movies in a first-rate theater. Located at 541 Airport Road in Lidditz, PA. And we're back on the Lancast with Jonathan and Jenny Groff. So, guys, tell me about the Stroopies here. Tell me, is there any idea of maybe a new flavor for Stroopies? <laughs> well, we've thought about it um, and even experimented just a little bit with like putting a preserve inside or something like that instead of the caramel. Um, but then there's a shelf life issue. I don't know. But the people who have really become Stroopy fans, they love exactly what it is. And there's this kind of philosophy, even why we haven't ventured real far of doing one thing and doing it really well. Mm -hmm. That we're they were shooting for. That being said, we do offer the Stroopy half dipped in Wilbur's dark chocolate, which is really good. Uh, it's a lot of fun actually because you know when you set that on top of a coffee mug, it actually creates a rim of dark chocolate on your coffee, of which the coffee cascades over into your mouth. You know, it's a really <laughs> You're magical really selling moment. It, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I could go for so, a cup of coffee right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I should have brought some for you guys. <laughs> but we, we take that, and then we actually um, do some where we mix ground-up espresso beans into the dark chocolate. Other ones, we sprinkle pecans into the dark, dark chocolate. But, you know, even though we offer these, at, uh, there's most of the coffee shops have just said, you know what, we just want the basic Stroopy and the chocolate. Everyone, they sell 50-50 the same. With the only exception is S. Clyde Weavers um, in East Petersburg, their their cafe. They're, they've been going with the pecan lately. Um, it looks really, really mm -hmm. cool. And we also do gluten-free ones um, for those that are intolerant to wheat. And Where can you get those? Because I know a lot of people are gluten-free. Uh, well, they sell them at Stelfer's okay. um, in the, at the Roorstown and the Lidditz store. Um, and where else? I mean, you can always go on our website or just shoot us an email. Stroopies.com. Mm -hmm. Very cool. www.stroopies.com. Yeah, so um, that's just something we're starting out with, but I think it's going to really like take off once we get in the right niche because mm -hmm. um, they, they taste for gluten-free product. I think they taste really very nice. So, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, that's cool. Now, why don't cover the whole thing in chocolate? Just half. Well, what we do when they they accidentally fall in. Oh. We're like half chocolate, half white. And, it, and then you're yeah. just like, oh, well, that one's ruined. <laughs> that, that one, that one, no? Or they can take it home for the kids or, you know, whatever. You could do the new, the new black-white cookie. Yeah. Basically, if you did vanilla on the other side. There you are. Well, we'll, we'll have to... Uh, Think on this. Yeah, I yeah. think I think part of it is like when it's half dipped, you know, you can still see the cookie. It it looks yeah. kind of you know it's like not you, as messy. Too. Yeah, it's yeah. Not a little more artistic, maybe. <laughs> well, I get it. I mean, you still yeah, go with the artistic thing. You're lazy. <laughs> <laughs> you still, you still get that stroopy feel with mm-hmm. it only half dipped. Like you identify mm-hmm. with what you're about to eat. So I can right. I can understand that. Although I think like people will sit, tell us they'll be like that's kind of an American twist, right? Because mm-hmm. like in Amsterdam, I don't think you're going to find too many that are half dipped in the dark chocolate. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it's it's nice to take a product and kind of make it your own too. Because Jonathan mm-hmm. grew up in a candy, you know, chocolate business. So of course we're mm-hmm. making them there. We have to like. Do something with chocolate, you know? <laughs> it's just like, did, did it come by accident, or did you think about this, or did you just kind of, like, spill a bunch of them into the chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, anything with chocolate's better, so uh, it was, I, I got to try as soon as I, as I saw them. They weren't doing it until we started working with it, uh, Jenny and I, and but we immediately tried the, dipping it and. Is it just, just dark chocolate, or do you do uh, just the dark chocolate? Just the dark chocolate, it, just for the sake of the contrast, because you get the caramel mm. in there and the, right. the bittersweet. It makes a good contrast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you tired of them yet, taste-wise? <laughs> the magic question. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, another question. I, I, no way. I love them. I love them. Uh, I get tired of the smell, oh, um, even amazing. though the smell's really good because it's sweet. It, you just that's the thing that um, after a while, if we come home and you know, some people might walk close to us and say, ooh, you smell like a Stroopy. Well, if Jenny or I say that to each other, it's not a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a like, Stroopy. Oh. <laughs> Do you ever come home and just think, I need a salt lick right now because yeah. I've just got too much sugar? <laughs> I, <just laughs> I think so. Well, what about growing up in a, in a candy factory? Did you get tired of candy? Or was it a lot of, oops, this batch uh, is messed up? <laughs> I never did. No one in our family ever has. Um, but I did switch from, like, I used to like the white chocolate, the real sweet stuff when I was a kid and now I I only eat the dark chocolate so I've, I've kind of mellowed out in my sweetness But it's like I used to tease him he was like you know I eat chocolate like wow this is like a real treat and he ate it like he was eating like potato chips you know, or something and I'm like it was everywhere so we just took it by the handful I was just like oh my goodness like this is like a I don't know it was just really odd alright that was good dinner what's for breakfast <laughs> what's for dessert now <laughs> Broccoli? Oh, man. <laughs> but you hear, he kind of answered your question on the why the dark chocolate. You just said right there. It's what he prefers. It's what he prefers, uh, uh-huh. dark chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> the truth comes the truth out. truth comes out. <laughs> He's trying to foist his opinions on the rest of us. <laughs> exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk a little bit about you guys. Are you from the area? Did you grow up around here? Or um, are you plants from somewhere else? I uh, grew up in New Holland um, on a dairy farm, so I guess I would say I'm kind of a transplant into the city, but um, we've lived here for, oh, actually, tomorrow is our 13-year anniversary. Hey, congratulations. So, yeah, thank you. And I have lived here in the city since that point, so, and you before that, so I guess yeah, I grew, it definitely feels like home, you know? I grew up in Central Manor, uh, just about three miles west of Millersville, and they moved into the city a year before Jenny and I got married. Um, yeah, where, where my family business was making candy. And uh, so I was always always thinking about... I think that helped to shape it, actually, because I remember as a kid, I was always thinking, how can I do this faster? How can I do this better? And, like, how can I tweak this or tweak that? And it wasn't my business at that time, so I didn't say too much, but... Um, so this gives me something to play with and uh, to try to grow and develop. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Well, I am also from New Holland, so oh, yeah? we share that in common. <laughs> we tease our kids that they have one grandpa that smells like cows and one grandpa that smells like chocolate. So. Wow. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and which one's the favorite grandpa? I wonder. Well, and they, they love them both equally. So. Well, comment. without the cows, they wouldn't have the chocolate, probably. That's exactly so, right. Because that's, that's right. I guess their milk is part of the. Uh huh. 
milk I, I imagine parties are pretty evenly distributed. I'll bring the milk. I'll bring the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> you got the whole thing. We'll so bring well. the strubies. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. We're all you just have to marry a coffee. Somebody has to marry a coffee yeah. family. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. So, there you go. Okay, so you guys have this uh, business that is this growing business. Um, what is the plans as far as the future for the continuing to grow it? Uh, you know, we we hit our first goal two years ago where we we didn't lose any money in it. You know, the, Jenny and I have been working in it uh, for for three years now. We're starting our fourth year. We um, first year we actually worked for free. That was our way of kind of earning our way into the company, and the company still lost money. So I'm not sure how that happened. But the second year we worked for like eight dollars an hour and made a little bit, and we were able to increase it and increase it a little bit. Now this past year we worked for twelve dollars an hour, and it's, you know we're not making a mint or anything, but. But uh, it's, it's actually fun to grow a business slowly, step by step, and, and actually not have to borrow money and not have to uh, mortgage anything extra to, to move it on. Um, so we've really been thinking about what do we want to go from here. Um, the wholesale division selling to local coffee shops and uh, small family-owned grocery stores has been a lot of fun. It's been kind of the backbone of the business, helps to meet the expenses. But the thing that really um, is energizing is um, those live events. And there's only so many in each region. So we're, we're hoping to like pick out um, small cities and towns uh, within like an hour or two from here and start doing some live events there. And from there, um, maybe the word can get out that some of the local coffee shops there can catch it and, and bring it. So you kind of start a little seed in, in a certain area and you hope it grows a little bit. That, that's kind of the our next goal. We just got done meeting with someone from uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, just a few days ago who's really excited about uh, trying it there. There's a lot of tourists, a lot of small German cafes markets. and German markets and things. It's a very cultural kind of place. We think it could really go well. So it's kind of a combination thing. We still want to work on that wholesale, but it's... To kind of to educate the public and to create this kind of rave about the product, we got to get it out there live in front of people. So that's what we're going to keep trying to do. Well, earlier we were talking about how some of the people came together to start the company and then kind of handed it off to you. Um, what are some of the roles or some of the things that, that the people that originated the company are kind of doing to either grow it or take it to new venues? Yeah, well... They're creative types, and they kind of like to keep thinking of new things. So I, that that makes sense to why they wanted to hand it off to someone and, and get started on other ventures. Um, one of the guys, Ed McManus, he moved uh, his career to LaSalle, where he's developing a new program there for international students. His brother works also at LaSalle as um, the, the CFO. Um, and then there's another guy, the Dan Perryman, um, he actually moved to India to a poor town there uh, where where there wasn't much job opportunities for people and started making stroopies there. And he hired about six different guys there. And, you know, different than here, this is kind of a part-time thing, but he can actually pay them a wage that can support their family there. And it's about a five-hour drive to Delhi where they ship the cookies and sell in a tourist market and get Western prices. But meanwhile, he's able to help take care of these these five families, uh, six families, I think it is. Um, and they've grown and stretched their wings a little bit to develop other kinds of cookies and baked goods. And every once in a while, he'll email us and say, can you get me a recipe for a granola or <laughs> something that's you know, kind of from Pennsylvania Dutch background? Well, they use some of the Stroopy crumbs in some of their other products over there. So... Um, they're so, doing some like stroopy brownies and you know so it's, some it's, things. It's doing really well over there, though. The, it, I really think that they're gaining momentum. So I'm 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 excited to hear um, their reports that they're sending back. So I mean, I think it's kind of in some ways the same. They're educating people, telling them what what the cookies are, and um, but there's a market for them. So it's, it's exciting. Jenny and I actually went over and visited them here about two years ago. And some of the guys who were making Stroopies, their history, they were working at making uh, brass products and they were using chemicals that were very harsh on their hands and for their body and things. And it was a really rough way to, to provide for the family. So it, it feels really honoring to be a part 
of helping to support their their livelihood in a way that's actually healthy and sustainable for them. Um, that's kind of some of those some of those deeper values of our business is what helps keep us motivated. Yeah, definitely. Just talking to you tonight, we can see that as an undertone when you speak about hiring someone here and and what they're doing. You know, <clears throat> that's very important to I guess the core of the company mm-hmm. is uh, helping people provide that. Yeah. In, Cookies are cookies, but you know, there's. I love cookies. <laughs> it's good to have a better, uh, deeper values. I think. Well, if anybody wanted to learn about you guys or more about the cookie and and the company, how can they do that? Well, we have um, a website, um, www.stroopies.net, or now we have .com too, right? Yeah, we so, got it. Um, you guys can go on there and find out more about it. Um, and Facebook. we also have Facebook. Yeah, it, if you uh, just search for Lancaster County Stroopies. Um, yeah, we, we're looking for for more friends to like us. <laughs> 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 so so please come and uh, come and like you. Come and like us. <laughs> <laughs> and we we try to keep our Facebook updated with like upcoming events that we'll be at. So again, the best way to learn more about us is to come see us live. So if you want to go onto Facebook, Lancaster County Stroopies, you can see where we're going to be, um, and then come watch the process and actually have some mm-hmm. hot, fresh Stroopies right off if the If you iron. promise to learn how to juggle, I will be there. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see you struggle, struggling hot, my, hot Stroopies. My, my utensils include some very sharp knives, <laughs> spatulas with hot syrup on them. Uh, yeah, it could yeah. be adventurous. It could, be it could definitely be adventurous. Be great. Yeah. We'll have an ambulance on, mm. on site. <laughs> Well, thanks again, guys, for coming by. It was nice You're to very welcome. You. Thanks, thanks for having us. Yeah. We hope you've been enjoying the Lancast. This episode was produced by myself, David Moulton, with show notes by Keith and Lawrence Lesser. All pertinent links to this episode can be found in the show notes at thelancast.com. If you specifically like this episode, we ask that you consider making a donation. Every little bit helps. Even a dollar a show can keep us going. If you'd like to help support us, you can do so by going to thelancast.com slash donate. And don't forget to subscribe in iTunes and tell a friend about the show. So, for the Lancast, I'm David Moulton. And I'm Keith Slesser. Asking, are you in the cast? Are you in the cast?